for most people, DLF is synonymous with ultra-modern 21st century living. Opulent homes, sleek malls, and world-class workplaces. But this remarkable story began decades before. In the 1960s, when private urban land development had been banned, resulting in an urban mess of haphazard development by unauthorized developers. One man took on these challenges fueled by his burning passion to make a change. Boldly leading his organization, catalyzing a change in government policy, mobilizing financial resources and earning the trust of landowners. His vision helped convert what was once barren land into an unparalleled knowledge city whose skylines rival any in the world. DLF's crowning achievement is the transformation of Gurgaon into a truly world-class urban metropolis. DLF may be most strongly associated with the Millennium City, but it has a pan-India presence, operating in 15 states and 24 cities across India. All over India, DLF has replicated the success story that has been seen in Gurgaon with lakhs of delighted customers across the nation. But while some might rest on their laurels, DLF has continued to elevate its offerings with new age residential projects that range from family homes to luxury flats. From world-class retail centers to leisure destinations that have taken India into the 21st century. Guided by visionary, inspirational leadership and strong management, DLF has boldly set benchmarks for construction and quality in India for the last 40 years. As we enter a new age in our country's march into the future, it is time to once again look ahead and build a new India. The greatest business legend of the last century, Jack Welch once said, leaders create a vision, articulate that vision, passionately own the vision and relentlessly drive it to completion. Today, we are about to hear from one such man, one who was faced with adversity and in it saw an opportunity to change the face of India. Let me take you back more than 40 years to the 1970s, when the urban land development was not permitted by the private sector in our country. The result was chaotic and unauthorized developments that dotted the urban landscape. While the outlook was grim, there was one man that was able to see beyond this. While he himself had limited personal resources and banks were prohibited from giving loans to private urban land developers, he remained undeterred. Armed with his determination and tenacity, 
he took it upon himself to convince the Indian government to open up the urban land development sector to private developers. With this completed, his vision moved beyond. In what looked like barren land in the state of Haryana, he saw the future. His passion for change drove him to adopt a unique and unheard technique of buying land from farmers by making the farmers themselves the financiers of his development projects. At that time, there were only two types of urban developments permissible, either industrial townships or residential townships. But instead of following convention, he dreamt of something different. A new generation of Indians that had been newly minted, highly intelligent and deeply enterprising, were looking for a place to call their own. Recognizing that their knowledge and spirit could revolutionize the world, he set out to build what had never been attempted before in India. A composite development of roads and infrastructure, offices and residences, facilities, educational, medical, recreational, all in one place, providing these hungry young entrepreneurs and intellectuals with the best schools, best hospitals, finest residential facilities, most modern recreational facilities that the country had to offer. A knowledge city, completely integrated in every aspect, a concept unheard of in India at the time and one that has since become the benchmark for all future urban development that have followed subsequently elsewhere in India. What this man planned and thought through 40 years ago has now come to fruition. Armed only with his courage and a burning hunger to succeed, he saw the future and he created it. He is the recipient of many high civilian and diplomatic awards and has had many honors bestowed upon him, including the prestigious Padma Bhushan, awarded by the President of India in recognition of his exemplary service to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I present this entrepreneur, visionary, empire builder, game changer, Padma Bhushan awardee, Chairman of DLF, Mr. K.P. Singh. All well-wishers, past and present associates of DLF, ladies and gentlemen, for me, you are very, very special people because you are not only our well-wishers, but you have now become an integral part of a company that means more to me than words can ever describe. In all these past years, I've encountered major obstacles in my journey to grow DLF. And when I look back, I feel that overcoming them all would not have been possible without the active support which I got from my family members, including my late wife Indra, and the role played by my elder daughter Renuka in standing behind me like a solid rock throughout those turbulent periods. I'm sure 
many of you have enjoyed the great events which you organized during past several decades to celebrate many of our family milestones. It was all managed to perfection by Renuka. Million thanks to Renuka and to all my family members for your wonderful support. Today, at this transitional moment, when I'm handing over the reins of the company to the new chairman, Rajiv Singh, who, as you all know, happens to be my son, I felt that I should talk to you directly and share my thoughts with every member of Team DLF. I'm certain that Rajiv is destined to become one of India's most successful business leaders in the coming years. I know for sure Rajiv will lead the company to even greater heights in the new India of tomorrow. At the same time, I also feel very happy when I see my younger daughter Pia teaming up with Rajiv to achieve DLF's mission. Pia now is spearheads DLF Group CSR and philanthropic initiatives, which I'm sure will go a long way in helping the deprived and underprivileged sections of our society. An important initiative undertaken by PEA has brought happiness in the lives of those unfortunate widows who had been condemned by their families to live in abject poverty and desolate manner in a place called Vindraban. A deplorable practice followed by certain sections of society in India for the past several decades. It gladdens me to know about the societal changes now happening in the lives of these unfortunate women, predominantly due to the measures adopted by her. Likewise, her recent initiative of making a Vedic center to impart knowledge and education to enable children of every strata of society in our country to become better citizens and adopt good values in their life is indeed praiseworthy. Several other major corporate social responsibility initiatives are now being undertaken under the umbrella of DLF Foundation, which I'm sure over a period of time will bring laurels to DLF brand and enhance its image of not only to be known as a commercial, profitable and well-run enterprise, but equally for a company who cares for its people, particularly for the welfare of the economically weaker sections of our society. It has been quite a stimulating experience for me to watch Rajiv at work these past few years, gathering together a brilliant team of extraordinary talented managers and executives and taking bold decisions to build a unique business model that not only helped in tiding over the business down cycles, but have now positioned DLF to take advantage of the enormous opportunities 
that are bound to open up soon after the recovery from the present spread of COVID-19. I'm sharing this with you with a sense of pride and satisfaction and also let you know my reasons of passing on the baton at this particular moment of time. One is, of course, the march of time. As you all know, I'm not getting any younger. But the second reason is more important. India is entering into a new era in which marketplace will not only be much more competitive, but will also be full of exciting growth prospects for organizations as well as individuals. The economic upheavals which are bound to unfold after the recovery from the COVID-19 episode are unimaginable at this stage. However, one thing is certain that eventually recovery will happen when God only knows. Personally, I don't believe COVID-19 will disappear in one go, but may follow the pattern of somewhat like Spanish flu, where it will come, go and recur again and eventually settle down when a vaccine is successfully developed. In view of this, we have to learn to live with it, which requires major changes in our mindsets, in the way we live and the way we do our business now. A new normal will be altogether different from what we have been practicing so far due to this unpredictable situation in future. Only those companies will survive and thrive which have abundance of youthful energy, innovative ideas, and a striving passion for quality and excellence. This calls for highly motivated team members with strong work ethics, professional integrity, and a burning desire to do better than the best. Work culture will undoubtedly undergo a sea change after the recovery from the coronavirus menace has been accomplished. I do believe today DLF fits the bill perfectly and is uniquely positioned to play a major role in India growth story as the undisputed leader in the real estate development industry. As a part of Team DLF, each one of you is an ambassador of the company in both your work life as well as your social circles. The reflected glory of DLF's corporate image will always stand you in good stead. The best advice I can give you at this point is always to strive for perfection in your work and always maintain the highest standards of personal and professional integrity. Very early in my life, I adopted the mantra that two wrong don't make one right. Reflecting back, 
I cannot recall of any incident where I have knowingly deviated from this philosophy of working in my life. It is therefore a matter of great pride for us all to know that today DLF has become the most compliant company in the country. Some of you have been with us for decades, but many of you who have joined the DLF family more recently may perhaps not be familiar with early years when we face seemingly unsurmountable odds and overcame them, many obstacles became what we are today. My mind goes back to more than half a century ago when the urban land development laws in India were stacked against the private sector and even banking institutions were not permitted to lend money to urban land developers. But thanks to the never say die commitment of amazing men like late Amrit Lal Jain and late Sarupchand Ansal, we were able to assemble more than 5,000 acres of land from over 2,000 feudal minded, mostly Hindu families, where sometimes every sibling had contradictory views of selling their ancestral family lands counseling them and making them to agree to part with their family lands was indeed a Herculean task. I personally spent time with each member of the families. I ate with them, sometimes slept with them in their dingy huts attended most of their religious and family functions, helped their youngsters to get jobs, helped them in setting their family dispute and even helping their children getting admission in good schools and eventually becoming a member of their family. I drank more milk with them during this period than what I have ever drunk in my whole life. As every time I visited a farmer's home, they used to offer a glass of milk, which I had to drink, regardless of its quality. I thus earned their respect on the same basis which my late father-in-law, Chaudhary Raghavinder Singh, did during the 1950 and 60 period. Today I wonder how I achieved this. Frankly, I don't know the answer. Maybe my relentless pursuit and hunger to succeed and sincerity of purpose was then my sole aim in my life. In fact, when a study team from Harvard University, sponsored by USAID, came to study how an Indian developer could ac accomplish this task in early 19s, they were stunned to discover what techniques we adopted to eventually assemble 
such large tracts of contiguous land without any litigation from any farm owners and where the same farm owners became the bankers of our company. A phenomenon unheard of anywhere in the world. All this happened, ladies and gentlemen, due to the sustained hard work put in by our few committed officials along with my personally visiting each and every home and meeting all farmers, owners and their family members, myself, over and over again for several years. I could achieve this success only because of the great reputation and the goodwill left behind by the founder of DLF, late Chaudhary Raghavinder Singh, my father-in-law, who developed more than 21 townships within Delhi immediately after the partition of India and became a virtual benchmark for the highest integrity of urban development where everyone who was associated with DLF at that time made profits. Unfortunately, this time both myself and DLF had no money to invest in buying these large tracts of land during late 70s and early 80s period. But I was young, hungry and developed a relentless mission to succeed. The important thing is that while during those difficult years when everything was stacked against me, but my few highly committed loyalty members lived up to our slogan which then said, we shall overcome, hum honge kamyab. This became our theme and hunger to succeed in our mission and indeed we succeeded not withstanding the odds and obstacles we faced. But let me not dwell too long in the past. Those of you who wish to know the full story of the years of struggle and eventually conquest can read my autobiography titled Whatever the Odds. And here we are today under a new generation of dynamic managers led by our new chairman, Rajiv Singh, who has already made DLF battle ready with the dedicated efforts of all of you. Success in the new India that is rapidly emerging will call for a vastly different ways of working than in the past. And as members of DLF team, each one of you will have to put your best foot forward in the coming months by working even harder, more intelligently and with greater focus on innovative thinking. As you all know, I have traveled extensively all over the world and observed that the most successful companies are those which have adopted three basic mantras, namely productivity, customer satisfaction and rigid compliance of laws. I urge all of you to ponder deeply about these essential ingredients for success because although they may at first sound simple and obvious, the truth is that it calls for a mindset change on part of every individual employees at every level in a company. Let me mention just a few things that need to change in our organization. One is individual productivity. 
elsewhere in the world, it is being increasingly recognized that higher individual productivity contributes to the overall productivity of an enterprise. Frankly, in our society, individuals are rarely as productive as they are capable of being. And it is often the case that several employees are engaged in working that a single person can do, especially with the advanced technological tools now available. Another issue relates to personal egos. Individual employees with a distorted sense of self-importance are harmful to the interests of an enterprise. Remember, respect has to be earned, not demanded. Moreover, those who are obsessed with their own designations and positions of power in a company tend to seek personal glory and credit and invariably dampen the enthusiasm of their other co-workers. Sometimes they even do get surrounded by psychophants. Continued existence of such psychophants in any company becomes counterproductive and therefore such persons should be edged away to ensure that you always have a lean, hungry, and productive team of employees. Good corporate culture requires everyone to develop humility rather than flaunt their egos. By doing so, they encourage everyone around them to do the same and together enhance job satisfaction and productivity. In my life, I practice the philosophy of Gita, namely, help others who needed help because in turn, God pays you back. Indeed, God has paid us back. Well, because with Almighty's blessings, DLF Group has attained a significant position in the country. This eventually leads to building good relationships. I strongly urge every member of DLF team to work on developing relationship with whomever you associate with. The philosophy of building long-term relationships will eventually go a long way in enhancing DLS brand name. A third essential is the value of initiative. The ability to be resourceful and work without always having to be told what to do is a workplace imperative. People who show initiatives demonstrate they can think for themselves and take action when necessary. It shows there is a hunger to succeed, a readiness to tackle problems that need solving, and a willingness to go out of the way to do the extra reach if required. An employee with initiative is always an asset to do any company. These are just a few positive qualities that I urge upon all of you to inculcate in order to become valuable members of Team DLF. Developing self-management skills require resilience, and determination, and I'm sure all of you are capable of adapting and being part of a corporate culture, which is vital for success. 
for those who are unwilling to or unable to change then i'm afraid they will have to face an old saying either shape up or ship out the reality is that a new and highly competitive business environment is emerging in india constant change will be the name of the game for dlf to surge ahead each one of you must consciously strive to be ahead of the curve as a team and as individuals together under the leadership of rajiv singh you will face the new challenges and seize the new opportunities a glorious future awaits us particularly after the economic recovery from the ongoing corona virus has been achieved in my new avatar as chairman emeritus i shall continue to keep my fingers on the pulse of the company and every successful step dlf takes will gladden my heart for as long as i live and wherever i may be situated thank you for your hard work love and loyalty keep the dlf flag high god bless you all